Well, hi, and thanks for joining me. Hey, I'm just starting on a new project here. Uh, it's actually a full-size stereo console. This is the record player out of it. And uh, so what I'm going to be doing today is the basic regular routine maintenance on the record player here, which, uh, which I've already operated while it was still in the uh, console, and basically everything moves, everything, everything works, um, so it's just pretty routine maintenance I'll be doing here. The cartridge is a bit of an issue, um, so surprisingly enough, this old record player has come with three cartridges and two needles. Um, so I'm really hoping that some combination there is going to work. In fact, the uh, uh, spindle, the record dropping spindle, was missing on this record player until I took the record player out and found the the uh, uh, spindle inside the console underneath the record player. You know that I think that happens a lot because they just they just fall to the side of the record player, and then if they, if they manage to roll just a few inches inward. Psh, They'll fall through a hole and, and go inside the box, so to speak. And uh, the result is this can go missing. A little hard to get for your average person to get into that box. So good thing this showed up because without it, well, we have some big problems here. And bonus, down in that box was this needle, which I assume has got to be a correct needle. Okay, so we'll take a closer look at that too. Okay, regular maintenance. So, one of the things I want to check pretty quick on a turntable like this, or a record player like this, um, is the quality of the <coughs> intermediate wheel, or sometimes called the idler wheel. Intermediate's a better name for it. What I do, they just take my nail, which I always have with me, and they just drag it over the surface and feel it. You know, what's it feel like? feel soft and pleasant or is it kind of hard and shell like so this one is soft it's very soft in fact this is great so this is in great shape this isn't going to provide uh, present any kind of problem <coughs> in terms of traction to drive the record player so no issue there excellent next thing I want to <coughs> kind of take a quick look at is how loose is this so I just turn it a little bit by hand yeah, that's about all I need to, to feel the lubrication or lack of. So yeah, that needs that needs a bit of work. And you can see down here where the platter rides, there's a vast amount of grease there. <coughs> so I guess the grease was probably on the outside of this. That's how come there's so much. I don't usually see that much grease. Hair, typically hairs get down in here. So I test the grease. This is a good sample right here. Just touch it. Uh, it's sticky. You know, it's not that bad. I've certainly seen a lot worse. <clears throat> the fact that there's a volume of grease here, it says two things. One, this thing's been maintained and somebody has re-greased it. Or two, it's been in a pretty good place. It hasn't been uh, during its life, uh, put somewhere, I don't know where that would be, frankly, where the grease would dry up a lot. Underneath, I think we'll see the grease is pretty dried up. But let's stay on top here, and what we'll do is we'll go after this, and we'll go after the uh, ball bearings that are down under here. So we'll do this guy first. Sometimes these are easy to get off, sometimes they are monsters, real monsters. First, we'll take off the heat clip here. I don't know if I can do it with the screwdriver. I got too big a screwdriver. There we go. Now, see if we can lift this off. finished doing one of these record players. I don't think I posted posted the videos for it yet. And <clears throat> the issue here is this is supposed to spin on a shaft which is not supposed to spin. This shaft is uh, riveted, bolted, screwed somehow to the deck. This should not turn. But what happens is the lubrication inside here, maybe 
maybe because of the kind of metal they've used here. I don't know. It, it really, really gets uh, frozen in there. And then when you do turn this, you can easily start turning this center post. It's not the end of the world. But you really rather have this post remain perfectly fixed. And I can already see when I move this, the post is going with it. So what I, when, I, when I turn this, what I'm really feeling in terms of resistance is actually the post and how it's fitted to the deck. Now this tells me this is not going to be easy to get off because I'm not, you know, I, I don't want to try rotating this now a lot to to free it up. Um, yeah, this is bad news. Okay, so we'll just see if it still comes off. It may, it may still come off, but generally, if it's if it's so tight. Watch out for this piece right here, the uh, this piece, and there's a piece down under here. Feels like it's stuck. Okay, I don't know if you can see that on camera. I guess you can. A little tiny piece. Yeah. So this is another thing worth testing. This is the uh, definitely worth testing. This is the what's called the velocity trigger, and this is what figures out when the uh, record is over. These pieces should move completely freely. They should just be as floppy as can be and these are not. These are not at all floppy. So this record player in its current condition will not detect the end of the record. So the, the, it'll play a record and just come over and go fadum, fadum, fadum at the end forever. So loosening this up is really really critical. And uh, lubrication normally not the right thing to put on here. Now this one's designed a little differently than some others. And a lot of these velocity things, this lower plate is right against this plate and they're kind of riveted together. It means there's a tiny little, well, there's virtually no, no space between the two plates. And uh, if you get a little bit of lubrication in there, it may actually slow the operation down. See, so, you know, that's moving pretty freely. This uh, lower part is not okay. So uh, well, you know, when we get this off, we can deal with all this stuff too. Okay, now I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, pressure, upwards pressure. I'm going to watch very carefully to see if there's any movement at all on the shaft. And we're talking about minuscule amounts of movement. I don't expect there to be any. Not with the way this one's stuck. Okay, so what I'm going to skip right ahead to uh, heating this up uh, quite hot, and uh, just wonder if I should use my. Uh, I normally use a blowtorch on these actually to heat them up a lot. Let's let's use the blowtorch. I gotta go get it. Okay, it's a uh, it's a beautiful snowy day outside. There's snow falling. I just brought this in from my garage. My garage is minus six degrees. Let's we'll see if this even produces any gas here. Oh yeah. Now, the thing about doing this is the heat is going to spread. <laughs> eventually, if you have this on too long, it will eventually spread to the point where you can't grab this anymore. So I don't want that to happen. I'm just going to move the camera back a bit. Everybody stand back. I'm going to try to concentrate the heat right, right on there. And of course I have no idea how hot this thing has already gotten. I'm usually watching for smoke, first sign of smoke, that's plenty hot. <laughs> okay, let's see if it'll come up. Here it comes, see that? Oh, wow. And then, way to go. So this, this, this really saved me up. I mean, the alternatives to getting this off? A lot of mechanical working. And as I mentioned, because this post appears to be 
turning. None of that's too good. So look at the degree of lubrication in here. Oh, this thing's getting warm. <laughs> degree of lubrication I'd say that's pretty much zero it's as if you think there'd never been any in there so this should have grease in it this is the uh, raceway the funny shape of it that drives the uh, tone arm back and forth automatically it's all about following this this funny shape the next thing I like to check is this little roller here let me put the close-up camera on it. In fact, we'll look at a few things close up here. Okay, so here's the roller. Right there. So these often get stuck so I'm gonna try turning oh no it's not stuck at all isn't that funny eh? well, all the play in it they usually don't have quite that much play but these are very often stuck solid I find just throw a little solvent uh, alcohol WD-40 almost anything onto the top of this and then within a few minutes maybe even putting a tool on this you can turn it you just turn it ever so slightly and she comes free. So again, th this actually, if this is stuck, it won't stop the record player necessarily from operating. It just results in more work for the motor to do to move all the mechanism in here. And if you give that motor too much work, two things will, well, the most likely thing that will happen is slippage in the traction system. You know, all the way from the spindle to the wheel to the outside of the record player rim all these things have slippages and if you uh, ask the record player to you know lift a ton all you'll get is skidding on these these parts here and that make me it make you think the problem is is the uh, uh, failure of, of, of the traction strength in here when in fact it's just too much gunk in the mechanism too much too much not enough not enough lubrication that's what I really want to say so funny that middle spindle look at the shaft here so uh, what exactly has happened to the lubrication that was in there I don't know but it's turned into a white powdery material and again I wouldn't wonder I wouldn't wonder I wouldn't doubt if it's uh, because of the metal they made that uh, raceway out of. Oh, looks like I'm using a floor mop on it. Yeah, that's putting too much. And yeah, too. That's not, not the best. Ma 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 ma. <laughs> Let's get some of that alcohol. Give me a little alcohol. So we'll throw some alcohol on this. And give it a moment. It's pretty hopeless trying to clean that up dry. So hopefully the alcohol will kind of re-energize whatever this stuff is, but it may not. Because it looks to me like it's gone through a bit of chemistry. Okay, we'll just clean the top of this guy. the alcohol out and we're doing the cleaning thing. It's really important to clean in here. Well, this is nice and warm now. Nice and warm for a cold winter's day. That's yeah, pretty cold. I think it's minus 10 outside. So snowing at minus 10 is a little bit unusual. It's really cold. You usually don't get snow. Really cold would be minus 20. The snow I'm getting today is called lake effect snow. There's a small area east of uh, Georgian Bay where I live. 
small relative to, you know, Ontario, big province. Um, where uh, wind is coming over the lake surface, Georgian Bay. Georgian Bay is really a lake. And uh, the wind picks up some moisture, and then when it gets over land, something happens and it turns it into snow and dumps it. So there are very particular, almost like snow lanes, if you like, where this occurs. Buffalo is a really good example. Buffalo gets lake effect snow. It's right at the end of Lake Erie. You get a wind coming across the whole length of Lake Erie. By the time it gets to Buffalo, Fort Erie area, look out. They might get enough snow in Buffalo to put out some of the fires. <laughs> yeah. Buffalo. Buffalo is a wood city. The houses and everything are built of wood. Toronto is a brick city. Uh, in fact, all of Ontario is uh, all the construction is done. Uh, may, m you know, most houses are built of bricks, like my house here. Uh, not so in Buffalo. Buffalo is a wood house city. And I'm just looking for something to kind of. Here we are. Clean that up. Consequently, because I live near Buffalo in Canada, I live. Uh, I, li I grew up near. Um, I grew up in between the cities of St. Catharines and Hamilton, in a small town. Close enough to Buffalo uh, that we got all the Buffalo TV channels, maybe all the major American networks. You know, talking proud, all that stuff. So I watched a lot of TV from Buffalo. Fire in Tonawanda. Let's take a look at that under the close-up, see if we got it neat. reasonably clean. Now you see how it has these uh, channels in it. Um, that's where the uh, uh, grease, grease should be hiding in there. So it's kind of available. see there's crap on there. Uh, then I have a little tiny piece of sandpaper handy. And we'll get a little tiny piece of sandpaper and just some fine sandpaper here. The thing about using sandpaper on any of this kind of stuff is that it can leave grit behind. And the grit is uh, grit is a problem. The other thing is, this is at the center of the platter. No, it isn't. What I was, was going to say is not true. This is at the center of this wheel, and the wheel, the wheel here, is driven on the outside. You can see it, how it's driven. So it's quite a bit of uh, leverage against this shaft. It would take... Yeah, see how terrible that is? Doesn't that look terrible? Ooh, it's all scratched up now. It is all scratched up. side of it here. What about the rest of it? We'll, we'll dry fit the uh, raceway back onto it. I have to slam the camera down to let it know who's boss. What's with this huge... What's that? What happened there? It's 
Wow, what's going on? Hmm, well. I can't say I've ever seen something quite like that before. Now this is, uh, Platter. If you look inside here, you can see there's a brass ring at the top. I mean, you can actually see the brass ring is fitted in right in the top, or you can actually see it there. If you go down, look at the other side, see another brass piece. Let's see if we, can, I don't know if we can see right inside there or not. I'm trying to get the light to help out. Uh, you can kind of get an idea that the brass only goes down about uh, a quarter of an inch, four, five, six millimeters or so. And so these brass pieces are the only parts that are touching the shaft here. So they're they're running up here in this part, and they're running down here in this part. But this part in between, you can actually see, but you can kind of imagine that there's actually nothing touching in here. And so what, what is this guy? Is this a little pocket for holding grease? I've never seen that before. Never noticed it. It's a weird looking thing. I don't think it's of any significance in the scheme of things. So don't dwell on it too much, Jimmy. Okay, now we're going to get back to working on the velocity sensor here. Okay, so this is what you were looking at from above. Here it is underneath. This is the piece that should move so easily. Why is it not? The only possible reason is it's binding in here. So it's you, know, you got to be really careful with these things. See, this is riveted here. So again, if you have a stuck shaft and you move this, you'll break free the rivet. Let's see what happens here. You'll break the rivet free from the metal. So the shaft will no longer be riveted to the metal. I don't know how important that really is. can't really see for sure if the shaft is turning. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll take this guy off. See, it should be like this. The bottom should be just like that. But it sure isn't. Let's take this off. Now let us Just a little different than many others. Hmm. Took it off with my fingernails. Put this in my high security place where I won't lose it. This should come right off. There's another one there. So each record player is done just a little differently. Was identical to the last one. Now this should come out. So where we'll find out how bunged up that shaft is. See, it should drop right out. Again, I think it's because of this kind of metal. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of solvent down there.
Now look, I, I know WD-40 is a big controversial thing. I was talking to one, my, my, my buddy about it. Yeah, there are some better products for using in a shop like this. So if you're an aficionado, maybe you're freaked out. I mean, WD-40 here is not a big deal. But I use it for cleaning potentiometers and whoop, other stuff. Okay, so we're going to let that sit for a bit. Maybe I'll try moving it just a touch. So I do not think the shaft is moving. I think its uh, rivet is, is not holding. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this shaft is completely still. So I just don't want to loosen this rivet up to the point where it's wonky. So we're, not, so we're just going to leave that sit for a bit. We'll go back up here. We'll carry on with a simple next simple stage, which is just cleaning out this uh, bearing here. So it's it's a it's a bearing sandwich. Got a washer on each side. Oh, good show. <laughs> just what I'm trying not to do. Just going to give up on the original. Lubrication, which actually seems pretty darn good. It's a bit of a yellowish color to it, but that may have been its original color. Okay, that's good. I'm going to bring up the ball bearings, which is like the best looking set of ball bearings I have seen in one of these record players for a long time. Wow. Really, this really does look like it's recently greased. There's a hair down there. Well, let's lift it out anyway. Often the uh, grease inside, something like this has gone black and has uh, hardened up and shrunk back from the little balls. Consequently, there's no lubrication of the little rolling balls. Now, part of the big deal of this is the platter. The platter is riding on top of this, and the needle is riding on top of the platter. So shake the platter, shake the needle. Rumble the platter, rumble the needle. Rumble the needle, rumble the speakers. So this is various things that are done to try to reduce the amount of uh, motor noise and whatnot that get up onto the platter into the needle. Part of that, and I'm sorry to say this, is poor fidelity overall. Poor fidelity overall saves you from rumble. No rumble. Now this is coming out of a console. The Large speakers in the console, there's, uh, there's six speakers all together, three on a side in this console. The large speakers are eight inch, it's kind of small. But you know, the designers may have known if they set up the uh, console to reproduce really low sounds, the hairs in there. They set it up to produce really low reproduce really low sounds you're going to hear rumble out of this kind of turntable this just isn't a good enough turntable for high fidelity work and the other limiting factor is the cartridge if the cartridge can't hear the rumble because it doesn't have the range then once again you've, you've you're going to come away with And say enough little rumble. That's not quite good English, is it? <laughs> I'm going to come away with. Oh, wait a minute. There should be a rubber. There should be a rubber. There should be a rubber under there. Where's the rubber washer? Let's take a look, Mr. Close-up. Here. 
that's it there. Let's pull that, that black ring there. Let's pull that out of there. It's just a little small. So, so this is nice, supposed to be nice and pliable, spongy rubber. Ultimately, the weight of the platter is sitting on this, squeezing it. Nothing wrong with this one. You know what? This almost looks like a uh, uh, a round washer, a round washer, um, a uh, oh, son of a gun! I'm gonna forget the word. Uh, you know, where it's it's tubular. It's uh, Can't think of the proper name for it. How do you like that? Yeah, that's what happens. Live video here. Uh, it looks like it was once a perfectly round tubular thing. It's been flattened over time. That's interesting. You could easily drop in a round, not a flat wall washer, but one of these uh, uh, that kind of go in your faucet. But not the kind you're thinking of. <laughs> it's the kind I'm thinking of that goes in your. Okay, I'm trying my best to let my brain come up with the proper name, but it's not working. It's coming out of your mouth at this point, I know that. Okay, well, I'll throw that back down there. So, so that's the whole idea of all this stuff. It's all about keeping the sounds where they're supposed to stay. Now, what should I do with this? Should I clean this guy all out and stick in new stuff? The short answer would be yes. I'll test it a bit here. Okay, does I feel any pushback at all? No, nothing. This stuff is really in good shape. So I'm sweeping it around a bit so it'll gauge the balls at the same time. Poking around in there, I find out if there's hair tucked in there. fiber. These are tricky to clean out anyway. I mean the most I can do is dig it all out, shovel it out, and then shovel in some more stuff. We will put a little new stuff on top of this. Okay. You know if I didn't talk I could do this in about a third of the time. But it wouldn't be as much fun. Okay, so bottom washer. Make the sandwich here. Put a little extra grease on. Whoa, on here. Can't help but get greased up on the fingers. for a long time. You can't, you can't remember which way this goes. Think of it like a cup holding the grease. It's got to go open side up. Don't put it the other way. And then we throw up on top the other washer. And we have the sandwich ready to go. Fantastic. Now we get back to this guy. Let's see if it's loosened up at all yet. This is turning. So, you know, if it's not turning, it's hard to get it out. Let's put it on the close up and really look at it. Because if it is turning, I'll take one approach. If it's not turning, I'll go get a coffee or something. Okay. Does it move? Okay, so I still have my blowtorch here, 
torch this and push it out. Which is probably the best thing to do. Could even maybe, you never know, maybe I can just push it out right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, because again, because it's not turning, it's really locked in there. So why not, if we had such good luck with the, uh, man, there you are, art, art shot. Um, we had such good luck with the torch, let's use it again. idea that holding it way over here it will not get surprised by the heat that's going to travel from it and now I gotta be prepared somehow to push this out I can't use my fingers obviously so I might be able to put something thin in there and, and put a prying force on it that sounds like a really good idea Trying force as close to the shaft as possible. There we are. That's not bad. Okay, now can we again I want the heat right on the shaft. That's where I want to inject the heat. Okay, here we go. Hands away. Because <laughs> I'll be dropping this thing if it gets too hot. I'll just be dropping it. Any cats below? Look out below. There is a cat. Okay, so I'm applying pressure and watching. There it goes. I can feel it. There it goes. Ouch, it come. Don't be fooled now. It's hot. He says. There we are. It's all the way up. heat got into this. Okay. Same same kind of stuff. White, powdery stuff on there. I think I'm going to avoid the uh, sandpaper on this one. If I sandpaper this uh, and I rough up the metal surface, it may not works so smoothly. I just got to kind of polish the stuff off here. Looks pretty good actually. Clean it off pretty good. Now, inside that little hole now. So it'll be a little warm, I guess. Maybe that'll help. I don't know if I can get this through there. about alcohol too is it evaporates very quickly so before you know it it's gone let's dry fit this now so that's what it's got to do that and also it should fall on its own weight it's a little sticky eh so I'm hesitant to put oil in here, but we may have to put a, if I, if I do, I'll put a very small amount of very light oil. So I'm just feeling it now. We 
case you're wondering what that sound is. Background. Shadow! Shadow! What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? Come on over. Come on over. Come on. Come on over. So usually when a cat is doing that, it's because the cat wants me to go where it wants to go. That's been my... Uh, come on! <laughs> and now if the cat does that, it's telling you I'm ignoring you. <laughs> cats. Hmm. I can't complain about our cats. We have two wonderful cats. Uh, two wonderful cats that play together all day long, doing all kinds of goofy stuff. It looks like something came out of there. It's like a one-year-old and a six-year-old cat. It's even better. Yeah, well, more stuff. So I guess when I tried to clean in there, it didn't go very well. I'm getting it out this way. Stress and strain on this. There's some kind of bristly thing going in and out of there would be good. I have nothing like that. I think we I think we got it now. That's how it has to be. No oil. Let's clean this guy up here. So you can put a tiny amount of very light oil in there, I suppose. So the way this works, this is, you know, this works in a very simple way, but it's extremely hard to explain what is going on with the velocity thing. I gotta put a gotta put a lock thing there, but I will give it a try. So picture, if you can, a soccer player with the ball coming slowly, the ball just in front of him, kicking it slowly towards the net. Every time he gets within ten feet of the net. The goalie sticks his foot out and knocks the ball away. The ball just goes a couple feet. The guy gets the ball, brings it back slowly, and the goalie kicks it away again. And this goes on again and again and again and again for almost uh, 20 minutes until the goalie, until the uh, player figures out that goalie, he's good at slow speeds, but he's no good at a fast speed. And the player with the ball approaches the goalie quickly goalie continues to move in the same slow way which was effective when the player came towards him slowly but with the player coming quickly literally the goalie's foot just can't get out where the ball is and the ball goes in the goal score that's how this works <laughs> okay I have to show you the goalie and the uh, and the ball player and the uh, soccer player here in a moment so what I'm trying to say there is it's all about the speed of approach. It's all about the speed of approach of this towards the center. As long As long as the tone arm is traveling in the playing part of the record, it's moving very slowly towards the center, 
but when it gets to the center of the record, the lines, you know, the grooves move more quickly, and the tone arm will pick up pace. It'll get past past the goalie. Oops, that was easy. It gets past the goalie every time like that. So, now take a look at this shaft here. I'll show you the goalie's foot. There's the goalie's foot right there, that little piece, a little piece sticking out there. That's the goalie's foot. Every time the platter goes around, I think it's going the other way actually. The goalie's foot comes around and he kicks the ball. Here's the ball. He kicks this. And the player makes another move. Once the platter turns around, this has now moved a you know, millimeter, one groove width in. Because it's moved one grid, one little bit in, this has moved out a bit like this because there's mechanics connecting yes connecting this arm all the way to here some of the mechanics are right here see that piece so watch this piece see it on camera as I move the uh, oh, hope this works move it in there see it starting to move no you can't see it starting to move let's try it again let's try it like this okay first this piece will not move but when I get the tone arm about halfway across, this will start moving. Watch. There. See it moving? Now that just keeps moving. That just keeps pushing the player forward. I, I, I may not have this exactly right, but you'll certainly get the idea. As, as the players move forward, the goalie kicks the ball back. Remember the goalie down on the platter here? He kicks the ball back. Something like that. But towards the end of the record, the tone arm moves quicker. This this moves quicker. This moves quicker. And the goal here is, and there's obviously not a net and a ball, the goal is to trigger another mechanism, which the kicker has been keeping this thing away from the whole time. The whole time from about halfway playing the record right to the end this thing has been trying to trigger something and the kicker has been stopping it but once the tone arm picks up pace this can move quicker triggers the thing before the kicker comes by and that's that's what triggers. that's why if you if you really if you try if you pick up your your tone arm here which I will do and you try to bring it into the center area as carefully as you can often it'll just grab it and start moving it back because in fact you moved it fast enough that the kicker couldn't couldn't kick away the mechanism and you end up engaging the uh, the return function okay I hope I hope I explained that I enjoyed it <laughs> I don't know about anybody else so that that's exactly the way it should be oh, oh, oh no it isn't I haven't got the top on yet Ooh. <laughs> reach over here to my secret e-clamp never lose it place put this guy back on maybe I can just push it on there we are still all moving freely perfect now we got to uh, lubricate this grease. I'm using silicone grease here which from what I understand is, is uh, stable over a long period of time. Whatever grease they had in here originally, look where'd it go? It's literally evaporated away entirely. In fact, you'd almost think they never greased this. 
don't think is normal. I'm pretty sure they grease these things up. Let's try to get off some of the excess. I usually find these with dried grease in them. Never find them this clean. If you had no grease in here, then the whole thing's going to depend on this roller. Maybe that would work. So I'm going to put a touch of grease on that. That's going to get really greased up once it gets inside this uh, track. And now we want to grease this piece here. I'm trying to work the grease into those grooves. There we are. A little bit of excess grease here. clean my fingers before I make a mess here. So now putting this back together is a little bit tricky. Uh, because you've got to get this uh, roller into the groove and you have to be prepared to push the roller. Usually move these a little bit. Oop, a little too far. There you got an idea what it does. So I look for the outside area, not here, here, so the roller doesn't have to come in too far. There we go. And then you almost always have to push these a little bit. this one. No, it didn't actually need to be pushed in. I just need to rotate this until it lined up and it fell in. Okay, so it's falling in. It, it rotates nicely. It's not holding the shaft at all. Goody goody. Put on the... Uh, this one I'll have to put a tool on, I'm pretty sure. Here's my technique on these things. Occasionally ends in disaster. It's lined up really, really right. Okay, everything's all greased up, eh? So. Get that wrong, this piece can go flying. Okay. I think we've done everything on top here we need to do except maybe uh, lubricate the motor. So let's, I don't want to get any of this greasy finger stuff onto it. I want to spin the motor a little bit and see how long it takes to slow down. I can spin it, spin it at all. It won't be visible on camera, but I'll be able to see it. So just give me a little spin, letting go and looking at it. I'm using my powers of judgment. It's not bad, but tossing a little bit of light oil in there is a good idea. Right where the shaft enters in there. Another art shot. Okay, bear with me one moment. There. So 
what you can do is you can spin the motor a little bit and determine where the, the shaft see you can see what's shaft and what's not it's quite obvious down in here my little there we are just a little wee bit of oil there Okay, so I think, you know, in terms of doing stuff to the top of this record player, we, we are done. Now, let's put some lids on here so we don't have an accident. And we're going to work on the other side of the record player. i got to flip it over lock this in but there's no needle anyway to be there's no needle at risk under here I still don't even know if the, uh, like I mentioned I think I mentioned they got three cartridges for this guy I don't know if any of them are any good yet so okay, we'll take this off flip it over put it back on now it's barely on these I think do it that way, gotta do it this way. Okay, there we go. Put this where I won't lose it. I'll put it with my super Super secret e clamp storage spot. Okay, so what do we see here? This looks incredibly dry in here. This looks really dry all through here. Looks dry, shrunken up, it's gone flat, got no life. I see lots of grease all spread through here. So the thing is, you want to kind of take note of these greased areas. It's a large greased area here, a large one in here. Because what happens, what happens to me all the time is I clean up all the grease, the old grease, and I can't, I can't remember what, you know, where everything was. But it's pretty simple. Wherever there is metal, right on here, like this, you want grease under there. Wherever you've got something like this mechanism here, this is the. Uh, Speed control here. No, oh, no, speed control. Here we go. You know, it's the lever is way over here that you turn. It's, it's under here that you move. And look, it's working its way all the way through this mechanism to the other side of the player to work this thing. Now, th these things are human powered, like I'm doing it. They're pretty strong. If things are sticky, I can just get stronger. That allows the makers to make a pretty rough mechanism in here. It's really pretty rough what's going on here. And what it's actually doing is it's raising and lowering the uh, intermediate wheel, which is under here now. You can't see it. it. Raises it up. See, this is a ramp. This is a ramp going up. It's climbing up the ramp. As this climbs up the ramp, it's pulling up the wheel. The wheel is contacting different diameters of the motor shaft. That's where the speeds come from. If you're watching my video, you probably know all this already. So I'll just do some clumsy cleaning here. You can see the mechanism works fine the way it is. Uh, again, because it's human powered and uh, I'm a real He-Man. So if you are if you are assessing one of these from above and you 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 turn this uh, speed control, you see you see how easy it should be. It should be pretty easy. 
So, I mean, you can encounter a lot of resistance there, but just power your way through it. If you're assessing one of these to, to buy or something like that, that's the kind of thing you want to kind of feel. What's happening with this in terms of lubrication is happening with everything. It's all going the same way. So if this thing is really sticky, this was really sticky, it didn't have that nice snappy sound over here. It, it, worse yet, if it, if, it, if it seemed to actually you move the lever and then the mechanism sinks into place, that's all above the deck indications that the uh, lubrication is bad. I mean, there's all kinds of other things you can do. But if it's bad in one place, it's probably bad everywhere. Let's see what happens if I try to wipe it up. So why remove the old stuff? I don't really know. Honest with you, uh, you know, a bunged up pile like that, yeah, it kind of makes sense. Usually, when you add new lubrication, the old stuff absorbs some of it, comes a little back to life. Okay, lots going on in here. To a large degree, the the, loop, the the grease I'm wiping off is actually grease doing nothing anyway. Grease that's doing something is generally hidden under the parts. I'll move a few things out of the way a little bit, just be a little gentle. Computer's running low on storage. Uh oh, that's bad. Uh, these video files I shoot are gigantic and they fill up my rather large hard drive fairly quickly. So I have an even larger hard drive I bring in here and periodically copy all the files off my shop computer. Looks like I better do that. In fact, this video may come to a sudden end if the computer runs out of uh, memory, uh, the software I'm using just stops recording and you don't lose anything, it just comes to an end and often I don't notice it. Looks fine right now. But, uh, it says I'm running low but it didn't tell me how low. So it's about a gigabyte for half hour of video at the uh, quality that I do it. many, many gigabytes of video. <laughs> now there is a piece in here, um, we saw it from above, it's this piece here. This piece, this is the pusher that's pushed by the tone arm that pushes the velocity trigger. See it here? Okay, so this again, this should not be greased, should not even be oiled, oil being a lot lighter than grease should be able to move free. It should just fall around like that. Just like it does. And leave that alone. Try to not spray it with anything. Because we are going to spray some WD-40 in here. This is the uh, switch that turns on and off the uh, cartridge. So during the mechanism's operation the cartridge is shut off. At the last minute it's turned back on. That way you don't have all the mechanism sounds coming out of your speaker. The wire here that uh, goes to the cartridge and this turntable somebody's I guess the manufacturer put some black tape here to kind of keep it in place and protect it from these moving parts. That tape looks fine. It's still stuck down. It's in place. It's a little bit up here too. Okay, that's probably good enough cleaning. Next thing, we'll throw some grease back on it. 
everywhere metal is chafing. Just like it did. You can pretty much guess that the uh, manufacturing uh, person on the line doing this did exactly, exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so I did mention something about uh, my hard drive getting full, and that's what just happened. So, uh, so the video recording stopped. I didn't see that. I continued doing some stuff, and then I noticed that it stopped. So since then, I have copied all the files off my uh, shop computer hard drive, put them on my portable hard drive, storage hard drive, and uh, deleted them and ready to go again, but I did a little bit of lubricating here. There's one. There's only one thing I really want to kind of go over again, and uh, this is a fairly important part. But right in here is a shaft that is pushed by this ramp, and when it pushes it, the tone arm lifts off the record and this underneath here where you can't see it is one of the most critical areas to uh, lubricate so I, I've already done it I, I took a cotton swab cleaned up under there under here and then I've stuck fingers worth of grease in here and that's when I saw the video it stopped so it's very important like these, these things look different on different players look for some kind of a angular piece of metal with a shaft dragging on it and, and that can be a very critical lubricating point. Now the last thing I think this one be the last thing. This this guy here, this is the overarm, this is the part that swings over the record to stabilize it when you're gonna drop a record. These things are in my mind anyway notorious from my experience at getting really sticky in there. So Really, a lot of shaft here. No lubrication on it at all. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit of grease on that. Not a lot now. It's a little bit is a lot more than nothing. And that's what we're going to do here. are always a little bit buggy though when you lift them up. It has to do with how you lift them off the record player. There's a right way and a wrong way to lift those overarms. So where are we at now? Oh, oh, oh. Another little spot here. This slides along this edge. Give them a, give them a chance. Give them a, give them a little bit. So now, I haven't put a drop of oil on this, it's all grease so far. The only place I'd really want to put oil in here is on a, a bushing type thing. I think I gotta get some grease up in here. There's another powerful pusher thing going on here, which is pushing on the pushing on this and that's happening in here I'm just gonna chuck a little grease in there oil 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 I don't know. oh I know where I can put oil I got now we're going to switch to the motor now. Remember I did the upper bearing with a little bit of oil. We're going to pull off because, you know, this is the time to do it. Even if the motor is spinning quite nicely, this is the time to uh, do that. It's kind of an unusual Phillips screw there. 
That's not that's not your typical Phillips screw. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of these Phillips screwdriver tips. Uh, being Canadian, of course, I'm stupid about Phillips screwdrivers. I don't like these star things. Uh, I like these square ones. Uh, I have a great collection of Robert's square head screwdrivers here, but not so good on the Phillips. <laughs> Maybe I can get this one. Uh, Unusual head. This, this might be the right one here. That's pretty good. A little bit of play, but not too bad. I got a bunch of them. Let me try them all. Nope. So here's a very specially shaped. Oh, not that one. Not that one. a little differently but I think it's too 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 small too pointed wow oh I see the one I'm actually after that's, that's not good. this weird one here I'm sorry it's a little out of focus there but this is just shaped a little differently uh, it's not particularly tight okay one of these gotta work for me this one first. These screws can be snapped in pretty tight, so they really want the right... Ah, no problem. You don't want to cam these screws. It's not like you can easily find a replacement for that. By cam, what I mean is uh, the uh, screwdriver head lifts out of the screw, and while you're powering it, oh, that was very light. That was very light. And when it does, it cuts the uh, cuts the uh, head of the screw and ruins it. Eventually, rounds it out. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. A buddy of mine was just talking about these these funny looking fittings here. You see this thing here? This piece and this piece. Often when you open up a motor like this you'll find heavy copper wire running just a couple turns here and there. And these are designed to disturb the field in such a way that when you start this motor it always turns in the right direction. Otherwise there's literally a 50-50 chance this motor is going to turn the wrong way when you start it up. Okay, so what I took off, what you would call the lower bearing. Oh, this one's this one's quite different from most. It's got a I've never quite seen this. It's got this black spring-loaded thing here. Usually, the bearing in here is a self-adjusting bearing. This one doesn't look like it. Let's see if it is. Just see if I can tip it. Oh yeah, see yeah, it tips around like that. Can you see that? So that, that will just autumn, just fall into nice alignment with this. Oh, okay. So, uh-oh. So this top is not rounded or pointed. So typically in these, there's a ball in there. Did anybody see a ball fall out? I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. I don't think there's any ball in there. Well, I can only put it back together the way it came apart, but quite often there's a ball bearing, a single ball bearing loose in here. You take this off, the ball bearing will be sitting right on top of here. Kick. Goodbye. And if you don't, if you're not at all aware of it, you may never know the ball bearing was ever there and it's gone. Your cat will find it. 
or work its way into the cat's litter box. Okay, so you can see some felt under here. Typically, the reason felt is in a situation like this, uh, well, there could be a couple of reasons, but one of them is to retain oil. This doesn't quite look like that. It doesn't look like it doesn't look like you'd want to soak this up with oil. It's kind of on the outside of the bearing here, so maybe this is some kind of a cushion affair. A little, some kind of sound absorbing thing. I don't really know. Who knows? Who knows what they're doing? All we know is that. Yeah, shake up the oil. We'll put a little oil in here. A touch on the outside of the self-adjusting thing and then a little bit inside. It's a very small amount of oil. And we'll just throw this back together. Imagine there's a ground terminal there. Are these screws identical? Yep. Grounding terminal, nothing connected to it. What I imagine there's a grounding. Okay, now bearing in mind. The screws weren't super tight. This, this is where the camming will happen. Exactly, 37.2 foot-pounds of torque. There we go. Because the bearing is self-adjusting, it, it'll line up. If it doesn't, if it isn't already perfectly lined up, it will in a moment after you start up the motor. There we are. So we've lubricated the uh, top and bottom bearing on the motor. So that should be one happy motor. So what's left on the bottom? Uh, one thing I need to do is I'm going to need to feed power into here. And uh, son of a gun, if I don't have a matching connector, you know what, I do somewhere. I, I've lost track of it. I don't know where it is. But I used to have a connector I could pop on there. Now i got to use my uh, really ugly cheater cord. There it is here. The ugliest cheater cord going. Pick the right terminals to put the power in. And which terminals would those be? I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's look at the motor here. Maybe we can figure this out quick. So these black leads power the motor. So you gotta have power going to the motor. The power through the switch. So we've got a brown one here. And then we got three wires going into the switch. Ah! So I only for two. <laughs> How come three? Uh, yeah, it really was only. Three because three. Three because one of these is actually going to feed power back to the stereo. So the objective here is power from basically the outlet comes here. This switch switches it on to both the record player motor and the console stereo, which is going to be in my shop next after this is done. So that would look like, this, I mean, just uh, visually, the brown wire here is on one side of the switch, and these two are coming out together on the other side. Obviously, the black one's going to the motor. This red one 
probably just tied to the black one doing the same thing and going back to the stereo. That means I would feed power into number three here and number one. One and three of the four of them that are in there. Now, I, I do have a, a dim light system in here and other stuff to protect me. Now, can I pop, you know, this is crazy. Can I possibly plug this in safely? I clip this so it doesn't do anything bad. That's one and three. I don't really want it shorting out here. Ugh. Isn't that ugly? I don't know. short right into this green wire. I'm sure that's not a healthy situation at all. I don't like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop for a minute. I'm going to dig around and try to find this. It's got to be somewhere. 